So, if we go into DaVinci Resolve and we just put some clips into our timeline that are fusion compositions, then we can see I've just created this simple effect with a background and then some text on top. Now what this looks like in the timeline is a text fusion composition and then three coloured fusion compositions. Now if I want to open this yellow coloured one you'd think I'd just select it and then open in the fusion tab. However, this is not the case because instead of opening the clip that you select when you move to the fusion page, it opens the clip on the top of the timeline. Now the way to stop this from happening is to disable by pressing D on the keyboard as the shortcut the clip above it or if there are multiple clips above it, then you'll need to deselect all of them. This can be quite a pain to do, especially if you have lots of clips in your timeline, so stick around for the end of the video when I show a better way to do this. To demonstrate the usefulness of this second tip, I've created this little text animation in DaVinci Resolve's Fusion. As I showed on the Fusion Basics video on this channel, when you open up the Fusion tab, at the top you have two viewer windows. Now these can be controlled by, when hovering over a node, selecting and deselecting the two circular icons, with the one on the right enabling or disabling that node's output on the right display, and the same with the left. Now this can also be done with the one and two shortcut keys. Now this also enables you to be able to display any node's output at any point in the node tree, and this can be specifically useful for doing comparisons to see what something looks like before and after an effect node in the node tree. Now most of the time, I would recommend having the media out node in the second viewer or the end of your fusion composition, and then anything extra in the left hand display, so that you can always see how everything will look by the end of the node tree. For this tip, I want to apply a mask to a clip. Now a mask is like a cutout, but masks are slightly different to other nodes, because unlike something like a paint node or many other nodes that have a connection line go through them, masks connect without a connection going through them or being hooked up to a merge node. Instead, you connect the mask into the node you want it to affect. Now this works fine if it's just this one clip that I want to apply it to, however if we have lots of nodes that we want this mask to apply to, then it gets really messy having to connect them all up from the same mask node. Thankfully though, there is another way to do this, and that is through using a channel booleans node from the hotbar and then connecting that after all the other nodes with the mask going into it. You will need to set the mask to go into the green triangle of the channel booleans node before setting the operation drop down to AND in the inspector panel. This now allows you to apply the mask to anything before this channel boolean node. Now before we go into dual screen keyframing, if you only have a single screen, you can also access the spline and the keyframes windows from the top of the screen. Now here I have this static square on a background that I now want to animate using keyframes in DaVinci Resolve. To enable the dual screen view, if we go to the top of the screen to workspace dual screen and then set that to on, then we'll see this dual screen view. On our left hand display, we'll see our regular view, pretty much what we're used to, but on our right hand display, we'll see all our keyframing features. Now, if we take this rectangle and we just place two keyframes, one at the start and one at the end of the clip, before animating those to move the square from the left to the right of the screen. Now on our second monitor, the first area to look at is the keyframes section at the bottom. Now this allows us to move the keyframes to any point within the clip, and we can see this moving on the spline editor above. Now in this spline editor above, we can change the graph shape of our effect. So we can set easing automatically, or we can manually set it using the handles that stretch from the keyframes. As you can see, we now have an easing effect where our rectangle moves from left to right in a nice and smooth way. For this tip, I've created this very simple transition, where the green colour would be one clip and the blue would be another. Now I do think this looks kind of cool, but one thing I think it's missing is some rotation to the blue clip as well. I think this could make the transition look much more interesting. So to do this, I can change the angle of it using an expression. Now because the size is already keyframed, if I link the angle up to the size, it will move with it. Now if we run this through, we'll see that this doesn't change the angle very much, because the size and the angle values are different. 
However, if we times the size value up for the angle, something like 40, then we'll see that this angle will move much more when the size changes. Now obviously you could say that you could just have keyframed the angle as well. However, when this becomes powerful is when you want to start making tweaks to the size keyframes. As this means that I can now tweak the size keyframes without having to worry about the angle, and the angle will just match it perfectly. As a bonus tip for this, when referencing a parameter inside the current node, you just use the name of the parameter, and if that parameter has spaces, then you just remove that space. However, if you're trying to reference a parameter from a different node, then you can just use the name of that node, followed by a full stop, and then the parameter you want to reference, which can be a really useful way to link different values in nodes together. Here in the Generators section of the Effects panel in the Edit tab, I found this interesting Contours clip that I really like, specifically with the first and the third version. Now I'd really like this effect as a node in the Fusion tab. Now to do this, I'd open up a blank Fusion composition, go to the Effects panel, open that up, go to Templates before finding the one I want. I can then just drag this straight into the node tree as a node itself. In fact, this is a node group, which is something we'll explore later in this video, but this means you can have so much more control over the effect, as well as having all the same options from the clip in the edit tab in the node group. One extra thing worth mentioning is that if you go to Eclipse options in the inspector panel and select the wand icon with an arrow next to it, this will open up that clip in the fusion tab with all those same controls. One way to add a node into the Fusion tab is to right click in the blank space in the node editor and then to go through the menus until you find the tool you're looking for. However, this can be quite a slow and annoying way to do it. So using the shortcut control per space gives you the option to scroll through all of the nodes or search for one. And here I'm gonna show you a specific node which I think is really interesting, which is the sticky note node. Now as the name implies, this node allows you to write things into your Fusion tab, almost like comments in code. You can also rename your note using the F2 shortcut, or by right clicking on it and choosing the rename option. In this fusion clip effect here that I've prepared, I have quite a lot of nodes going on to make this happen. Now one really great way to tidy up this huge cluster of nodes is to use groups. Now as we can see here, I have a few different sections of these nodes. The purple nodes towards the top of the node tree make up the rectangle that the text goes in. The two nodes on the left of this make up the arrow and the singular node on the right makes up the text before this is merged together with the multi-merge node and then being fed into the tracker to be overlaid onto the footage. Coming back to the concept of grouping nodes, if we take these purple nodes at the top and select them all by dragging a box over them and then right click on one of these nodes and select the group option or use the control G shortcut before renaming them to an appropriate name, creating a group of nodes. Now this can be opened by double clicking on this group. From here you can edit any of the nodes in the group as you would if they were in the rest of the node tree. As you can see, grouping nodes can be a great way to make much more manageable node trees that can be much more easily edited and understood in the future. Keep in mind that this when combined with our next tip can be a really useful way to save effects that you've created for future use. Here in DaVinci Resolve, I've created this little podium screen effect using nodes in the Fusion tab. Now I quite like this effect, and it uses up quite a lot of nodes that took quite a bit of time, therefore I'd like to save this for future use. Now one of the ways you can do this is by just simply copying all of these nodes and pasting them into a text file. Now whilst what you paste into the text file will most likely just look like nonsense, this doesn't matter as if we save this text file and store it somewhere in a folder, then when we want to come back to it, if we select all of this text and just paste it into DaVinci Resolve, across any project and most DaVinci Resolve versions, it will paste it straight back in as notes. This is also a really powerful and simple way to share your node effects with friends and other creators. 
It's also worth mentioning that this use of copying nodes can work on node groups, individual nodes, and much larger node trees. If we go in the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve and we want to connect a node between this background and media out node, then there are a few different ways we can do this. Now, in this instance, I want to connect this effect that we created earlier where we could add a mask at any point in a node tree. Now, one way I could connect this up is by deselecting this line from the media out node and manually connecting it through. Now, this works fine, however, it's not the most efficient way to do it. Instead, if we drag the node over it and hold shift, then this will automatically connect it in. This can be even more powerful if we then also use it with something like a text node. Now a text node doesn't naturally fit in the middle of two nodes, which is why it automatically creates a merge node to join them together. As a bonus tip here, the shortcut of shift also allows you to detach a connection going into a node, should there already be one. Coming back to this problem from the very start of the video, where being able to open clips to the Fusion tab was a right pain with having to disable clips above it to open them, I'm now going to show you a better way to do this. Now one of the ways you can do this is just by right clicking on a clip and selecting the Open in Fusion option. Now this is a great way to open a clip into Fusion, however this is not the quickest way to do it, as we can also create a shortcut in DaVinci Resolve to make this simpler. Now to create a shortcut, if we go up to DaVinci Resolve and then Keyboard Customization before searching for Open in Fusion, then we can select this, select the empty box and type in our shortcut before saving this to our Keyboard Customization. This allows us to select any clip and then use the shortcut to open it in the Fusion tab really efficiently and easily.